Hi, I'm Anita from ketogenicwoman.com and today I'm doing some meal prep for the next few days on protein sparing and ketovore. I'm going to uh, do some protein sparing noodles, both the uh, thin ones and lasagna type, and I'm going to actually make a lasagna. So stick around and uh, we're going to get started now. So yesterday I went grocery shopping to get a few things. I did a grocery haul video and I will link that below so you can see all the goodies that I bought. Today I'm using some of those items to do a little bit of preparation for the coming week. So I what I'm gonna make today is I'm I'm going to I'm gonna make my carnivore noodles that are protein sparing. I've changed the recipe. It is now dairy free, so I have figured out a way to make it dairy free. I'm also going to show some more, you know, some some of the best practices for making it, like some tips and hacks and things like to make sure that you're successful at the noodles. And I'm also going to make a lasagna. And the lasagna, so the, the noodles are protein sparing, and I will show you how to use them in protein sparing recipes. But I'm going to use some of the leftover noodles to make a lasagna that is for a keto day because it's got cheese and, and all that other stuff. So we're going to do all that and we better get started because there's a lot to cover here. So I've got my oven set to 350. I'm going to start with the noodles because I need some of those noodles to finish my lasagna prep. So in the noodles, it is pretty much, uh, it's, a, it's a real simple recipe. I, I need three and a half ounces of white meat chicken. Um, some people I've seen, they're using, um, when they're doing this recipe, they're using canned chicken, and, and that's, that's okay. You can use canned chicken, just make sure you drain it really well, um, because I developed the recipe with dry chicken in mind. I'm gonna weigh this because I want three and a half ounces, which is about 100 grams. So I'm gonna just weigh this first. Yeah, so three and a half ounces is 101 grams. Teddy, it's your lucky day. Okay, so there's my chicken. I'm going to just put it in here. Probably don't have to tear it up, but this is not exactly a Vitamix that I'm using, so I'm trying to help it along here. All right, so there's my chicken. And in the noodles also goes egg whites. I'm using a simple canning funnel because I tend to be clumsy and spill everything. We need two thirds of a cup of egg white. Okay, two thirds of a cup of egg whites, about an eighth of a teaspoon of salt, so here's where I changed the recipe. I was putting in, I think an ounce of cheese or half an ounce of cheese. When I was making the recipe, I kind of based it off another recipe that I had on my website. And I was thinking that it needed the elasticity of the cheese in order to roll it and cut the noodles. But really what it needed was the fat. And so I decided to try it this morning with just an egg, because the egg yolk, of course, does have some fat. This is going to change the macros of this particular noodle slightly, um, and I will put those macros below uh, once I figure them out. It shouldn't be too much different. But what it does do is it makes this noodle dairy-free, and it's also, it's also still carnivore, and it's protein sparing because this egg yolk, this one egg yolk is the only fat going in here. The rest is high protein with the chicken, the egg whites, and now the egg. Okay, so we are going to blend that up. My oven is set to 350 degrees. So I have my pan. So one of the biggest secrets to success with the noodles is to have a big enough pan. This is 
This pan is 12 by 18, um, and, and I usually you see 11 by, 11 by 17 is fine too. So 11 by 17, 12 by 18, I believe this is six, uh, might be 10 by 16, I'm not sure. Um, but you can see it's smaller than, than the pan. Um, and then I, what I do is I, is I pour the batter in the middle and I just try to make it the size of this rectangle. So this batter is a little bit thinner than the one that had the cheese. So pour it right in the middle and then just kind of spread it around a bit. I see I have a chunk of chicken in there, which I'm going to remove <laughs> and give it to Teddy because that's too big of a chunk if I can see it like that. So just try and get as much out as you can. Do it. Where's Teddy? Oh, Teddy, come here. Teddy's happy, I'm happy, I got smooth batter. One thing you can do to help it along is to do this and then, oh, there's another big chunk. I guess I should have just blended that a couple more minutes. There you go. This one doesn't need too much help. You could probably, like with the spreading, you could probably just kind of work it into place even, even without the spreader. Just go back and forth a little bit. Okay. Take those two pieces out. And then it'll be perfect. That looks pretty good. Here you go, Teddy. So I'm going to put this one I found this morning when I made it. It took about 10 minutes at 350. So I'm going to check it at 10 minutes. While that is baking, I'm going to finish assembling the lasagna with the noodles that I made this morning. Um, not, not these ones, I'm just showing these to you. So I made these two batches of noodles this morning. Both of them are dairy free. Um, if you've ever tried the psyllium husk noodles that I have, the protein sparing ones, that's these. This is a dairy free version. What I did was I took the cheese out of that one and again, I just replaced it with an egg. It, the, the noodles, uh, I mean, they, they turned out okay. I was able to, to cut them, but they have a very soft texture, which I haven't tried them yet. I'm going to try them before I you know, do them again on a video. These ones turned out fantastic. I just, I just love these ones. And so these ones, I was able to cut them. They're, you know, they have a nice texture. They have a nice flavor. Um, I think they will perform just like the other ones did. So, um, so I'm gonna talk a bit more about that in a moment, but when I was making these noodles, what I did was I, I cut, you know, I, I rolled and cut part of the recipe into the finer noodles, like the fettuccine noodles, and then I left a couple of bigger ones uh, to make the lasagna. So I, I've already got, so the, the, the bottom piece of this lasagna is these noodles. Um, and uh, the, the middle layer is going to be the chicken ones. And if I, if I get some out of that um, extra, I'll do another top layer. So I have my bottom layer here. What I have here is one pound of extra lean ground beef. I fried that up this morning and I mixed it with one cup of Rayo's. Okay, so I mixed it with one cup of Rayo's. This big giant jar comes from Costco. You can get smaller jars at the grocery store or on Amazon. And I really like, I really like the Rayos. So this is going to, this is my meat. I don't add anything else. I, I just, I just fry the meat, put in the cup of sauce. That is it. Um, if you've watched any, you know, a certain number of my previous videos, you might know that, that I have a lot of sensitivity to different spices and things. So I do tend to keep things to a bare minimum. 
I am happy though. Um, raw tomatoes really affect me. For some reason, the sauce doesn't. And I only just recently discovered that. So I'm happy to have recipes with a little bit of tomato sauce in them now. I, I you know, wouldn't go overboard on it, but this, this recipe will be for four. And so I would be getting a quarter cup of the sauce and that seems to be okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a layer of the meat sauce on this and just kind of spread it out. I want to put it in a sturdy pan first because by the time I fill this thing up, it's going to be heavy and floppy. So just going to spread this out a bit. Okay, so that is going to be my bottom layer. Now I'm trying to go easy on cheese and so I will be using less cheese on here than what you might want to use. And that's fine because I've also got ricotta cheese going in here because I just don't do lasagna without ricotta cheese. Just love that stuff. So, so there's my second layer. And what I'm going to do next is the ricotta cheese layer. So I'll show you that. So in here, I have one cup of, of ricotta cheese and one egg, and I'm going to mix that. This makes kind of a little bit of a, of a cheese custard. Um, if my cheese was endless, I'd probably put some Parmesan in here. <laughs> you know, back in the day when I had about seven different cheeses in my lasagna, this can be a spare down. I mean, this is for a keto day, but I still, I'm still trying to, you know, minimize the, the. I mean, yeah, there's there's cheese in lasagna. Let's face it. But it doesn't need as much as what I used to use. Okay, so here goes my cheese layer, my ricotta cheese layer. I'm just going to smooth that over top. All right. I'm going to put a little bit more meat on this one. I'm saving some for the last uh, layer. Okay, so we just need the rest of our noodles to finish baking. And where are we here? Yeah. Okay, so I'm just going to set that aside. So while we're waiting for the noodles to finish baking so I can finish the lasagna, I'm going to grate some mozzarella cheese. I'm probably going to go with a cup of cheese, which is about four ounces. That, that should be enough. But you feel free to load that baby up with more cheese. If you are not sensitive to too much cheese, then go for it. If you've been missing lasagna, this might be the recipe for you. I'm going to give that two more minutes. Okay, it's starting to curl up from the edges. Um, that's how I kind of tell it's done. Um, so yeah, this, you know, the secret of doing this is how thin you can get the batter and then just getting it out at the right time when it's not overcooked, but not undercooked. This actually ended up taking 12 minutes at 350. So we're gonna let it cool down because I want to be able to peel it away from the silicone mat. Okay, so this is now cool to the touch. Um, I am going to peel it off my silicone mat. Now, uh, it, it does complicate it when the batter spills over off the mat and onto the the metal part, that does not like to come off. So what I have to do is take my handy flat spatula and just try to, just try to work it. Actually, I'm just gonna cut it right there along so that I can separate that. 
Try not to cut your your mat. I mean, you don't want to cut your mat. Um, like, don't slice on the mat um, because that will degrade it after a while. It's better to cut on your cutting board. There, that's coming. So, the, I mean, the rest of this, look how nicely that peels off. It's just when it hits this, the, the metal part of the pan is when there's issues, and that's when you have to pry it off. So you just have to be patient and work your way around the mat. You've at least, oh, still have this piece over here to do. At least got it off the pan. But you see how it just, it really wants to stick to the, to the pan, which is why I like to use the mat. And now, I'm just going to pry any of the remaining part here that wants to stay. There we go. So you should be able to have, you know, a nice sheet like this and then take that out so that you're cutting on the board. So now I do want to have some for this. So I'm going to, I'm gonna cut off a couple of nice big wide pieces for my lasagna. Yes, it's the crunchy ends. Teddy knows the crunchy ends. He knows they're his. There you go. Just make it fit. You know. Because it certainly doesn't have to be perfect when it's covered in sauce and other stuff. There, so I'm gonna put another layer there, but first I wanted to deal with this here. So then the next step is to roll up your pasta, your pasta sheet. Now this is where you want your sharpest knife because if you have a super sharp knife, like this one is, this is the knife that I almost cut my finger off and we were filming. <laughs> we had to stop. <laughs> It's all better now. Anyways, look how thin you can make these noodles when you have a nice sharp knife. Um, sometimes I make them wider, you know, for something that would be like, you know, where you could have them have a thicker noodle, but I generally like them about, about like this one. You know, that's, that's what I like. So these noodles are Protein sparing, the macros are excellent. I'm going to post them below. You can make chicken soup out of them. Um, and I do have a chicken soup recipe. I'll probably post some recipes where I'm actually using the noodles so that you, you can have some ideas. You can have them on, on a keto day and you know have it with a creamy Alfredo sauce or something or a car carnivore day. One of the things that I like to do on a protein sparing day, if you do like the meat sauce, as opposed like the bolognese as opposed to an Alfredo, you could make the same meat sauce that I made here for the lasagna. And you could, just all you do is you heat the ham, you know, what when the hamburger and the sauce are simmering, you can put your noodles in there kind of almost at the last step. They actually hold up really well. You don't have to worry about them disintegrating or falling apart. They just they just need to be warmed up because they're fully cooked when they come out of the oven. So there's no reconstituting or, you know, having to boil them or anything like that. Um, but because most of you are not doing cheese on a protein sparing day, what you can do is mix your noodles in with the meat sauce and then sprinkle nutritional yeast on top. That stuff tastes, it tastes like you sprinkled, you know, a tablespoon of Parmesan on there. So do that and you're, you're dairy free still sticking to your macros. The macros on the nutritional yeast is, is very good. You don't need much for that flavor. So these are my leftover noodles. I'm going to uh, try to 
stuff them in here. I've got lots of noodles for this week. So I will be probably doing exactly that for tomorrow night's dinner, because this is going to be tonight's dinner. So we'll put those aside and we will finish this. Put uh, some of my cheese on here. Okay, so this is going to go into the oven at 350. I would say for about half an hour, but I guess we will find out. I'm just guessing because I don't remember. <laughs> but when it's all hot and bubbly and the cheese is melty and it looks like actual lasagna. Um, and, and believe me, it, act, it tastes like actual lasagna. You won't be disappointed. Okay, so there's our cheese. And I'm going to sprinkle a little bit of this on here. This is just an Italian seasoning that I love. And I'm almost out of. I have to drive to Vancouver to get more. That's okay. It's worth it. All right. Okay, I still have my oven on at 350 from when I made the noodles, so I'm going to put this in there now. And we'll see you back in about 30 minutes. There's our lasagna. It needs to cool down and then we'll cut a piece and take a bite. Okay, it's cooled down now. It, uh, the pan is still hot, but I am ready to slice into this thing. See what we have. It smells amazing. I think I may have lost a little bit, but... This looks like lasagna. It smells like lasagna. Okay. Okay, I want to, uh, I want to try a piece of this. Because it sure looks good. <laughs> Teddy's watching. Yes. You're waiting for your piece, aren't you? So this is really good. All the melty cheese and the ricotta in the middle. It's so good. So there you have it. it. Tastes very much like traditional lasagna. Okay, so um, this tastes amazing. The noodles are nice and firm in there and uh, it's, it's cheesy and the rayos taste good. So, uh, I, you know, you might want more cheese in it. I sort of went light on the cheese because I had the ricotta layer in there. Um, this is for a keto day, just to summarize. This is for a keto day. I will put the macros for the, the, the new noodle macros down below. We made the lasagna, it is delicious. The, the noodles held up very nicely and they are nice and firm. Uh, it, the, the, the lasagna is great, it's, it's nice and cheesy. However, this is for keto day with all the cheese and all, you know, the ricotta layer. This is for keto day. These can be used on protein sparing if you're not using, um, you know, all the diff all the dairy and, and the fat. So what you can do is do a marinara, put some nutritional yeast, make it in, make it with chicken, make chicken soup. Um, there's all, 
you know, I'm sure that some of you will come up with some great ideas on how to use the noodles for protein sparing. And, uh, and there you have a keto dish with the same noodles. So I hope you enjoy it and we will see you on the next video. Did I drop a little piece? There's Pippi. There you go. Where's my gloves? Where's my gloves? Here, can it. <laughs> Day 53. <laughs> Day 53, I, I am still cooking with the beef. Are you done?